welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Today, I thought we could do a new beauty launches. It's been a while since we've like talked about the new stuff coming out. I think something with the holidays has kind of like, I don't know, it's been a bit slow, but I do think it's been enough time that some things have come out. I definitely want to talk about them with you guys, let you know my thoughts and just chat and get caught up about all of it. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. Let's just get into it. And the biggest update, I want to update you guys on my thoughts now with the Pat McGrath and the Bridgerton. If you guys don't know, I did a video kind of duping it out. I did this whole inspired look. It was so fun. I really enjoyed doing that video, doing that exercise, what I basically think about it as. And like, honestly, I kind of think I got it out of my system. So I'm kind of excited about that. But this, if you guys don't know, this is the Pat McGrath Labs and Bridgerton collection. This is going to be coming out on the 26th. So I love that they sneak peeked this way before the time. I love it because it gave me the chance to not feel like it was new, to dupe it out of my collection. I mean, this little palette, it's so cute. It is the Diamond of the First Water Eye Blush Palette. Like, eye blush palette, I just love the name. I like like, even just the term eye blush palette makes me like excited. I love a lot of the colors in there. I really love that sparkly astral blue. I really like those kind of taupey shades, the matte one, as well as the kind of like dusty rose color in there. I love the kind of unexpected look of these pinks with the blue shade. And there is something exciting about that, especially in such a small palette, like a six pan like this. I was just buying the fantasy of it. I've never even watched Bridgerton, but I just, I liked it, you know? And so I created a look inspired by that color story and it was really pretty. And um, now that I've done that, I think I kind of got it out of my system and I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe I would like this. Maybe that blue shade really would be something I love and maybe I would use it a lot, but I don't think I need it. I know this is gonna be expensive, even just for a six pan, like I'm expecting it to be in that $50 range at least. And you know, when I think of the other colors, how often I'm gonna be using them, I'm just like, do I need it? And I don't, <laughs> and I don't. Um, and I, I, I don't know, that's just where I'm at. And I love it. I'm like, Lauren, stay here. <laughs> no, but I wanted to update you guys because I was super excited in that video. And that is, I, I think an example of like how things can change with just a little bit of time when the hype isn't there, when it's not brand new. And I just have to say, I am so glad <laughs> that this was sneak peeked so early because if not, I probably would have, you know, been really excited about this palette. Again, I don't, think think that the quality is going to be bad. I don't think that it's going to be a bad product. If it's still something that is something you want and you think you're going to use a ton, you know, go for it, do your thing. But for me, I'm so glad that I was able to see the sneak peek, have this newness, have this excitement, dupe it out of my collection, do an inspired look, have so much fun with that. And then now that I've done that, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay now. <laughs> so that's exciting news on my front, at least to me. When it comes to the blush palette in here, I think that's really pretty too, but um, I'm definitely looking more for like single blushes, I think going into the new year. I definitely want to explore some powder blushes and, and try some more, but these colors don't seem exactly right for me and I'm not wanting to invest, I think in like three that come together. I'd rather individually buy three separate blushes even than do that, so I'm not gonna get that. And then when it comes to the highlighters, I think these are regal and beautiful the embossing is so gorgeous, but the colors are definitely pretty distinct. There's like this silvery icy gold that's more cool toned, um, almost looks silver really. Then there is this really beautiful vibrant yellow gold and I, I think they're so pretty to look at. I really do. I think that texturally they look pretty beautiful as well, but I just know myself and I don't think that I would get the most use out of these as highlighters. If anything, I'd probably use them on my eyes and stuff like that, which is a great way to use a product multiple ways, but I'm not gonna go into a product knowing that's how I'm gonna probably use it most and buying it full price or buying it really. So I don't think that I'm going to get anything from this collection. Wow, my my, how the tables have turned because if you had asked me that only a couple days ago, it probably would have been different. Like I was buying the palette, like I was buying the eyeshadow palette and here we are now, a couple days out, I'm feeling good. I don't need it. So um, yeah, little update, thought I would let you know. Really beautiful though. I mean, it still got me excited and inspired. So, you know, I'm happy about that, but I'm definitely not getting it. Next, let's talk about 
about some ColourPop stuff. They're releasing some new quads. These are the Stay Jeweled collection. I think these look really beautiful as well. I have one of the quads called Triple Scoop. It's this um, like orangey brown color. And when I bought like seven ColourPop palettes earlier this year, just to kind of, you know, give ColourPop a chance, cause I really don't buy that much ColourPop. It was one of my top favorites of the stuff that I bought. Um, I just love how compact it is. I thought the formula was really nice. It's just one of those ones I know um, maybe isn't the most exciting to look at. Maybe it's not the most flashy. It just was a little under my radar in a way. And then having it, it's like the one I'm actually gonna use type of thing. And so looking at these, I think they're stunning. I really love the green one. I love the colors, like all of it, the texture. They do a great job taking photos of them. I'm not sure if I'm gonna purchase these. I like to kind of keep my distance from ColourPop because <laughs> I think it's such a slippery slope of like easily bringing lots of stuff in when maybe only one thing would be good, but everything's like a little bit less expensive. Maybe you wanna hit free shipping and you end up having like 10 items come into your collection. So I think that I'm gonna pass on those right now, but they look so beautiful. I could see myself maybe at one point um, picking up one of these or, or something, but I don't think I'm gonna go to the website directly and pick these up, I don't think. And I'm realizing right now, I think one of the reasons I really like them is because they are this kind of in between of neutrals and colorful. So they're not like the brightest blue, the brightest green, the brightest purple. There's something a little bit subdued about them, a little bit toned down. And so with where I'm at right now, um, that would definitely be more the colorful eyeshadow palette I'd be into on top of the fact that it's a small little quad. Like, you know, I think it's a nice release. I'm not gonna lie, I like it. <laughs> I really do like it. We'll just keep on with ColourPop for a little bit. A release that I am, I'm definitely not gonna get. This is the Von Matte Mega Palette. Um, this is neutral. I have been into neutrals and I've even been more into mattes than I have been in a while. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still prefer all shimmers or I still prefer shimmer heavy palettes or looks, but you know, a good matte here or there nice dark matte, a nice like crease a color. I, I can get down with, I, I, I realize <laughs> they are nice. Wow, okay. But a full on matte palette, I'm not there, okay? I'm not there. This is not tempting me at all. I will say that <laughs> Basically, ColourPop can potentially be like similar to how Natasha Denona is for me, where you can have them as palettes, but then you can also reimagine them entirely as singles. And so there is something really awesome about that. If you like that idea with Natasha Denona, maybe you don't like the formula, maybe the price point is too high and you don't wanna pay that much, you could be doing a very similar thing with ColourPop palettes because all their palettes are magnetic, which I think is so awesome, or most of them. I wanna say most, but it's almost all. And so when I think of some of these bigger palettes, even some of the smaller ones, um, I can totally understand someone wanting to, you know, maybe pick something up for a few shades here or there. The packaging's cute. And then you can reimagine and kind of still breathe life into those palettes. And I do love that about the ColourPop. Like, I think that's a really positive thing about their stuff. But this is a lot of mattes. It's a huge palette of mattes. And I'm just definitely not there with the mattes specifically. That is something that I definitely look at when palettes come out to know if it will be good for me. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm already like, if it's matte heavy, I wouldn't do it. So an all matte is just like, nah, I can't, I can't do that one. But with this, they also re-released their blotted lip products. And I remember having a blotted lip product from them a long, long time ago. Um, and I think this is like, I think this is an exciting launch. This also makes me want to try some things. I think they look really nice. Definitely a style of lip product I'm interested at the moment. Something that's a little bit sheer, maybe a little bit hydrating, not too opaque necessarily. <laughs> Literally describing the opposite of a liquid lipstick, which I've also been into. But in general, I feel like maybe I'm a little bit more into lip products than I was a year ago also. So those I think are a fun release and I think makes sense. I don't think they have anything similar to that in the line besides what they used to have, which they don't carry anymore. So I think there's like one more ColourPop collection that I did want to touch on because this one, um, the overall palette, the Feeling Bubbly palette was not something that I was interested in. I think that it's pretty, I can look at it and be like, wow, neutrals, really pretty. I don't know, if you don't have a lot of neutrals, maybe this is the palette for you, but I'm not tempted to buy that one at all. The part that I was interested in were those like jelly mud shadows. I think they're starting to bring those back. And I don't know, something about these swatches. I have one of the jelly mud shadows from the Nightmare Before Christmas collection. And I do really like that. I thought it was nice. It kind of dries down, locks down. I've been into potted cream shadows. So those three, 
<laughs> were a little bit enticing, a little bit intriguing. I was definitely looking at those swatches. Although I will say they're looking a little messed up in this uh, pot. I will say like the text structurally, it's looking a little cottage cheesy or something. And I'm not sure I love that. That was definitely like, <laughs> something I didn't like seeing. I didn't think that looked very visually appealing to be completely honest, <laughs> but um, the swatches looked beautiful and seemed like something, again, I like cream shadows right now because if I wanna do something super um, minimal or fast, I can just use a cream shadow on my lid and be gone. But I also really have been enjoying cream shadows as like a base for other looks. So I feel like they kind of serve a dual purpose and I can use them kind of in all makeup situations instead of it just being an easy look or just being an intense look. Anyway, I think that's most of the ColourPop stuff. I think that's everything. A few things, like a few items actually were okay to me. And maybe six months down the line, if they're still there and I was making a ColourPop order, I could see myself trying one or two of them, but I'm probably still gonna stay away. I feel like that's just... <laughs> That makes it the easiest on me <laughs> to just kind of stay away as long as possible and, and not let little items creep in because it's a slippery slope, baby. Next though, let's talk about the Natasha Denona release. This is the newest release from her. It's a new mini eyeshadow palette. So I was just naturally excited because of that. Like I do love the minis. I think they're really awesome. Price point wise, I feel like for Natasha Denona, you know, it's 25 bucks for five eyeshadows. I love the size. Like I just, I like them. I'm into Natasha you guys know. But this is the Mini Biba palette, and I do like overall the colors in here. There's something a little bit rosy about these neutrals, and I love that. Um, but this is matte heavy. There are four mattes and one shimmer in the middle, and I do feel like this makes sense for the Biba palette specifically, um, because it's mostly a matte palette. But there's two reasons why I don't plan on picking this up, and you know, even with the color story being something that I do actually like, I do like the neutrals that are in here because it doesn't have more shimmers. Like I need at least two shimmers, if not three. I would have preferred it to be three shimmers and two mattes. And then, you know, I could see myself picking this palette up, but because it's a mini, the shadows don't pop out. So that's not a benefit to me. It's like what's in there is in there. There's no reimagining it. That is what you're getting. And so that's like kind of a mark off, I guess, for me when I'm thinking of how it will function in my collection, how much use I can get out of it long-term, whatever. But also again, the mattes thing. Like, yeah, the center shade is pretty, but um, I tend to use more of those shades for my brow bone and, and inner corner, not necessarily on the lid. Um, and so it just feels like it would just be a definite forced thing to buy. And maybe I'd use it, maybe I'd love it, but considering I don't use mattes as much and I have obviously tons of stuff. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pass on that. When it comes to the Rose Cheek Duo, I was kind of disappointed by this, honestly. Um, I feel like I've seen this Cheek Duo from her, like this exact one. It wasn't called Rose. Um, and maybe this one's less peachy or doesn't have that duochrome kind of flip but I definitely was hoping we'd get something different than like the same type of color of blush and um, that's not what that was. So I definitely won't be picking that up either. I just feel like I have seen that, like I have seen that exact one. I would have loved something more berry, something more brown, something like, like straight up orange or red or just something, you know, different. And I almost felt like it was a clone of things I've seen. So um, I'm not picking anything up from that collection and I don't intend to even later on. I'm not intending to, if it went on sale, I don't intend to buy that at all. Okay, there's a new highlighter from Fenty. It's kind of a sneak peek, so we don't know like a ton about what it is, but this has a really pretty embossing. It looks very white, so I'm assuming that it's going to be either like transparent kind of clear where it'll work on a bunch of skin tones or it'll be like a, a multi-chrome iridescent type of highlighter. And when it comes to either of those, I'm not really interested. I have really been into just a nice, I don't wanna say basic highlight, but I'm not someone who loves a super sparkly textured highlight on my cheekbones. I might use that type of highlight on my like eyes and use it that way and really love it. But when I'm actually thinking of like a highlighter that has a lot of like sparkle texture, I definitely don't prefer that over 
just kind of a classic good shiny highlighter, you know? So if it goes that way, I'm not sure it'll be right for me. And then if it goes iridescent, I do think that those can be really beautiful, um, but I have quite a few of them and I know how much I use them. So I don't think that it would make sense for me to buy this one. I think the packaging's stunning. I think the way that so far it's presented in here is really beautiful. I will definitely keep my little eyes peeled to see what it actually is just because I'm interested, um, but I don't plan on purchasing that either. So yeah, I'm not gonna get that. I feel like there's a lot of stuff out there that it's like, I can appreciate, I can see it, but it's just like not for me. Like it's cute, but okay, I'm not gonna get it. Like I'm not gonna get any of this stuff, which is really nice actually. This is something that I don't plan on buying, but it, it was just like a fun release, like a throwback. This is with Flower Beauty and Charlie's Angels, which Flower Beauty is owned by Drew Barrymore and she was in Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels is one of my favorite. I love that movie, okay? I love Charlie's Angels. Like that's like part of my childhood. I, I just, I love it so much. Like da na na na. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I mean, the way that Sam Rockwell plays with our hearts, the badassery of the women, like it's just amazing. But anyway, it's kind of cute. It looks like it's almost like a DVD. Like that's what it, it looks like. Almost like you're opening the DVD. There's Drew from the movie there. And then it's a neutral palette in a circle form. I'm not interested in it as makeup. So like if I were to buy this, it would definitely be like the merch thing. It's because of Charlie's Angels. It's because it's a collab with Drew's brand. Like I just think it's a really full circle awesome moment to see happen. But when I think of me actually using the product, I'm not sure if I would. I hope that if anything though, the formula in here is something like the uh, Jungle Lights palette because that is really awesome. It's a great formula. Um, So that would be great if that was what was in here for anyone buying it. It would just be like the best <laughs> neutral eyeshadows. But I don't think I will actually pick this up, but I loved seeing it. I think it's so cool. Yeah, I don't know. It was just a bit of nostalgia, but I've learned I don't need to buy necessarily makeup that is necessarily nostalgic for me um, or collabing with IP that's a nostalgic for me to still enjoy it or um, kind of like have a warm fuzzy feeling like I can just enjoy that warm fuzzy feeling go watch the movie go check up on what Drew Barrymore is doing currently and kind of enjoy that you know what I mean I don't know anyway okay next this is something that was just on trend mood and these are from City Color Cosmetics they're really affordable which is something I liked and it was some liquid eyeshadows well it's well it says liquid pigments I'm pretty sure they're meant to be eyeshadows. Now, color-wise, I really like these jewel tones. Like, I think that they are a nice range of color and they look really pretty. The women wearing them on their eyes, it looks beautiful. Like, they're shimmery and sparkly and festive. I like the vibe, I guess, you know? Um, and the price point, $6 each, $22 for all of them. That's a pretty affordable price point, so that's really great as well. Liquid eyeshadows seem to be coming back in full force, and I do love a cream. We've established this, I think, in this video. Video. So there's a part of me that does want to try some liquid eyeshadows. I'm kind of like remembering that I used to love the Josie Marin um, liquid eyeshadows, those coconut ones where all the doe foot applicators just kind of like yeeted off the stick and just like floated around for a little bit. And I loved those things. <laughs> so I'm like, maybe, you know, like I'm kind of like sitting here being like working myself up of maybe liquid eyeshadows could be good. So I've been testing some here and there. We'll see. But um, I don't think I want a matte liquid liquid shadow, I don't know. This has both, it's the matte and the metallic. I just think liquid eyeshadows are tricky formulas, man, to master, because as much as I can think of the Josie Marin ones being something I loved, the Kosas ones, I hated. I hated Copper Halo. Like, I, it was so hard to work with, and maybe though, maybe right now I'd be great at it. Maybe somehow if I had had it this long and now liquid shadows are coming back again, I could, you know, use it and love it. I don't know, but anyway, I think they're pretty. I'm not sure. I'm still on the fence about the liquid eyeshadows. I'd love to know what your favorite formulas are out there. Um, I've been interested in maybe those Artist Couture ones that came out more recently. These are all like really beautiful neutral colors. I definitely think I'll stick to those or maybe like duochrome topper type products. Um, I just know those I'll get the most use out of even though these swatches look beautiful. Those are some of my thoughts. Okay. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Next, there's a new line to the friggin' poor fashionable family, the light primer water-based pore primer. You know, they're never gonna let the professional die. And I used to really like the professional back in the day. It's a pretty cult classic primer. Um, I don't think I'm really interested in it. It's not really my style, I think. So yeah, I'm not excited, not surprised, kind of like what benefit does just like continues to repackage. I kind of hope that they do something new and like you know, get a new whatever the professional will be in 2022, like start laying that groundwork. But what do I know? 
you know? Okay, moving on. Next, there are some new palettes from Jason Wu Beauty. I think you can pick this up at Target. They retail for 25. Like, I know I'm into neutrals. These ones look a little boring still. Like, I'm like, uh, the texture's not there. It's a lot of mattes, I think. Like, they're not bad, and maybe you can get some really beautiful looks out of them, but they're definitely in the sea of makeup. There's so much out there competing for my attention and my money and everything. Like, these don't do it for me. These these reminded me almost of, like, uh, the Maybelline palettes, like the, the nude one that they had. Like, I don't know, back when it was, like, a big deal for drugstore brands to have bigger than quad palettes. These are giving me those vibes. And kind of NYX. It's like Maybelline and NYX had a baby. That's what this is, and I don't know. It's not doing it for me. Okay, next, this is a fun one. This is like really fun. Um, it's the Icy and Glam Light collaboration, and I think that they really nailed it on the packaging. They did like a blue palette, they did a red palette, and there were some lip products as well, I believe. Pretty cute, right? Like cute to see on my feed. Um, I really love Glam Light's formula, and so there's a part of me that like just kind of looks a second glance at anything Glam Light's gonna release, especially if it comes to eyeshadows, but I'm definitely, like, this is where I know that I'm not as into color because, you know, these monochromatic palettes just aren't doing it for me right now. Um, when they're this big and this bold, I just know I'm not gonna use them. Like, put one of those really beautiful blues or two in a another palette with some neutrals with maybe some, like, warm tones or this or that. I don't know. Um, and then maybe I'm a little more into it because I'm like, I can use that, but also I got my neutrals. And um, this is just like, nah. You get the blue and that's what you get. And for anyone out there who loves color, I really think that this would be, like if you love blue, this is the palette, right? Like it has tons and tons of blues. I think that the formula again of Glam Light, all the times I've tried it has been great. So I would assume that it would be great in this one as well. You know, we don't always get a red palette, so that's kind of fun too. But yeah, it was a pretty easy pass overall. Like, I wasn't tempted to actually spend my money, but I thought it was cute and a well done, um, like, execution of an idea, I guess. So that's the Glam Light. And it makes sense too with Glam Light. They've done, like, the food stuff kind of from the beginning. And so it's cool to see them do something that isn't just like a burger palette, but would be like the In N Out burger palette. Like, I'm not saying that needs to happen, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> When I'm looking at it of like how far they've come, it feels like a pretty big step or like a bigger step or something. It's cool. Anyway, moving on, not gonna buy. Something I'm interested in, this is from Rare Beauty. These are the bronzer sticks and setting powders. I've actually been setting my face with powder, you guys. <laughs> like I have definitely been doing that. You know, in real life, I don't feel like I need it a ton, but sometimes the masks, you know, you gotta like, keep that shit on your face and not only on the mask. I mean, it's gonna get on there, but like, can we keep some of it to the face? So I like setting my face for that, but also like specifically on camera, like thinking of filming makeup, which sometimes is different than real life makeup for me. It is nice to not look super shiny um, all the time on camera with how the lights reflect. It can just give the actual wrong look. Like that's not even what I actually look like, but the lights kind of exacerbate any of the shininess you might have. So I've been enjoying the powder and the Huda one I've been using looks really great. Um, I don't find that there's an issue, especially when I keep it just to the center of the face really lightly still um it's been working for me so i'm telling you transition mode where at who am i using powder now like i went from using shit tons of powder to no powder to just you know being in the middle and being like yeah powder is good sometimes like wow imagine that okay anyway so setting powder kind of interested in the bronzing sticks definitely interested in i love a stick format for something like this because it's so easy to put on and then blend out and i still want to try rare beauty like i really do want to try Rare Beauty stuff. I don't know. I feel like liquid blushes for me are passing. Like, mm, I'd rather try a powder than that. So I'm like the cream bronzer though I can get down with. So that might be something I, I pick up. They're going to launch on the 25th. On Christmas, you get your bronzers. <laughs> I might pick one of those up. That's something I'm, I'm interested in. I feel like when I think of my collection and what I have, I don't have something that I'm just uh, in love with that I'm using currently. So that is something I could see myself purchasing. Next, I really liked some of the stuff coming out from Colored Rain. These little palettes I like more than the bigger one, but this is the Botanical Collection. These have two eyeshadow palettes in them. They're $16 a piece. I love that they're six pans. Um, these have like, it seems half shimmer, half matte. So I like that there's at least the even amount of shimmers and mattes. Um, and I like the color stories. Again, we're getting a lot of neutrals, but there's some color, like there's something going on and I like that. I really do think these ones are pretty, I'm not sure if I'm gonna pick them up 
or anything, but I did really, I really liked them. I did, I liked them. There were also two cream blushes that came out with this, which I think would be expansions off of the other four that they came out with, I think this year or in 2021. Yeah, this year still, <laughs> just barely. There's some lip products as well. I don't know, I thought this was a really beautiful release. It seems like early spring or something, like that's kind of the vibe of it to me, um, or early fall, like I could see either one of those. So being released for me in December is like maybe a little odd, but I'm kind of into it. I like it, I think it's pretty. The other palette that came out like right before this is the Rebellious Nudes palette. You know, I wanna buy a Colored Rain palette pretty bad. The big palettes I use just house all my singles come from Colored Rain. I have some singles from Colored Rain that I do really like, as well as some that I didn't, but I also feel like they were like moving that formula out. So I definitely want to give it a try. And this one though, it's so matte heavy, I knew I couldn't do it. I was like, it's so many mattes. Like it's not half, it's mostly mattes with three shimmers. So I knew I would have to pass on this one, but then when those botanical collection, those little palettes came out, I was like, okay, maybe these ones. Maybe at some point, I'm not sure, um, but I did really like them, definitely in the top of like the things I see coming out that I'm interested or would potentially be interested in buying. I thought I would mention this because Sephora is just, they they had their November sale and then they were like, and we'll do a November coupon right after 20% off for everyone, which I'm like, okay. And then now they're doing perfumes 20% off until uh, the 24th. So any full size fragrance, 20% off. You guys know I've been into perfume, so I'm like, okay. And then I think I saw something today saying there's 20% off sale items. So I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> the sales are um, popping off um, in a way that I didn't really expect, but I thought I would mention a few new perfumes that are at Sephora. So one is the Ellis Brooklyn Apre. It says that it's a dewy, first snow, boozy, woodsy fragrance with spices and sweetness. I did actually pick up a little vial of this because this seemed like a scent right up my alley. I love like a pine tree scent. I love kind of the, the cold woods type of scent. Um, and I really, enjoyed this one. So if you're into that type of stuff, I think it's one to check out. Maybe you might like it. Um, definitely one of my favorites of the newer perfumes at Sephora. Another one that's new at Sephora is from Kayali. This is the Eden Juicy Apple. Um, and this is another one that I was like, I'm gonna pick up a little bottle of it because I wanna know. And this is nice. It's a very crowd pleaser scent. Like I think a lot of people will enjoy it, but I do think that you could probably find something similar to it from a different store. So it definitely has that apple. Um, it's very fruity and sweet. It has a youthfulness to it, but there is something kind of deep in the background of it. So um, I don't know, I like it, but I would not want the full bottle of it probably ever. The little one's gonna last me forever. It's not really in my perfect scent profile, but I do think it's nice and I think a lot of people will enjoy it. But I do think it strays pretty far from what is in the Kaoli line. I'm not horribly familiar with it, but I do think it's quite different from what I know of, of the line. And last, there's a new one from Replica. I think it's called When the Rain Stops. And that one I find is quite masculine. Um, it definitely has that like kind of clean, fresh out of the shower kind of deodorant vibe, like cologne vibe. So yeah, those are some of the new ones that have come out, but 20% off fragrances, I mean, that's pretty good coming from Sephora. And a lot of stores have been doing that with fragrances. I know Ulta was doing like five times the points on fragrance. Other um, department stores have been doing sales as well. So um, yeah, just wanted to note it in case you, you know, you are one of my Scent Sunday people, you know. <laughs> Moving on, another kind of thing, I don't know, it's not like an item, but it's like a thing that's happened. <laughs> Does that even make sense? Whatever. This is the Pantone color of the year. The new Pantone color of 2022 is very Perry, and I freaking love the name, and I love this freaking color, and I just hope that it gives us good vibes going into 2022, okay? I like it. I like it. I like this cool toned kind of periwinkle purple. I'm into that. Very Perry. Hell yeah. You know that mix of like, is it blue? Is it purple? I love it. So um, very into that. And I'm excited to see if there's any like makeup that comes out trending like that, what that actually means. Does anyone even follow it? Is it a real thing? I remember when Sephora used to do like blush palettes to the Pantone color of the year and like did a collections with Pantone of the year back in the day. That is a throwback. There's a new highlighter from Kaleidos coming out. I think it's already launched. So this is the Space Age Gifted Highlighter. Um, it's a multi-chrome one. So it's different than the other multi-chrome. This one seems to have more of like a golden pink shift. And the other one has like a golden orange and like green 
kind of shift going on. I should be getting this at some point. Um, it just had some issues with like shipping and whatnot. But yeah, I think it's gonna be really beautiful. I think the other one that came out is really pretty as well, especially if you like a multi-chrome highlighter. I tend to use those products, like I've already mentioned, more for like the eyes than I do on the face actually. Uh, but I do think it's, it's pretty. So I'm excited to see it once I get it in my hands. But it's a definite specialty product to me that I don't wear all of the time. I was really excited to see that Charlotte that Tilbury is coming out with the beautiful skin foundation. It says that it's medium coverage with an instant glow infused with hydrating hyaluronic acid and it's supposed to make you look radiant and plump and smooth. There are 30 different shades and I think the fact that it is in a squeezy tube and like with a pump has me really, like it's, it's promising to me because a lot of BB creams and more hydrating products come like that and that is more my style. I kind of like the medium coverage where you can get the coverage you want but you probably can sheer it out if you want less coverage also. It's just one I have my eye on. I definitely want to explore some foundations going into the new year. I have some of my favorites and I do like using them, but it'd be nice to have a few different options that I could maybe recommend or could compare formulas to. Um, and so, yeah, that's something I kind of have my eye out on. I think that it's coming out, let's see, it will be available January 5th. So I have a little bit of time, I'm interested. That might be something I, I try out. But for me, foundations are like, I need to try them for a while and see them in different situations and, and all that. So it's definitely something I need like consistent wear to even get get thoughts on. Another thing that I thought was really pretty, um, but I don't plan on getting are these Fenty Beauty liquid highlighters. These are the liquid kilowatt fluid freestyle highlighters. And um, there's some really beautiful colors. They look so metallic. I love the like dripping of the liquid metallic. Like it's so pretty. I think I've just been into beautiful powders though lately. Like um, I do like the way that a powder looks as long as it's a good one. You know, it doesn't look heavy. It doesn't look cakey. It doesn't look powdery, but I don't want that type of powder highlighter, but um, you know, finding that right one that is powder, but gives you just a beautiful look, almost something that could be liquid. I like that. So I don't think I'll pick these ones up, but I think they're really pretty. This palette for some reason caught my eye. This is from Artist Couture. It's the Supreme Nudes, but it's the Quickie palette. So it's like the smaller version. Um, there's a lot of mattes in here. So that's like keeping me away, but the shimmers that are in here, like the tones of the golds and the bronzes are a little bit different. There's like this kind of smoky depth to it. There's just something about it that as a neutral palette, it did catch my eye. I liked the smaller size. Honestly, like I really, I just do like smaller sizes of stuff overall. Um, so I thought that was just cute, wanted to mention it. And I think we only have a few things left. Okay, so there were some indie palettes that I thought were really pretty. I'll leave all the different places that I got this information from, but I usually look at trend mood. I look at the indie mood for indie releases. And I also looked at beauty news specifically this time. And I kind of like collected these items before before I just went into it because I wanted to be a little more put together and I think it's better actually so anyway this I, I would have bought it. Like I think the pre-order is over so I couldn't, but I would have, I went to the website and I purchased a different palette. Like this was a good one. I'm like sad I didn't see this earlier, but this is the Cozy Cabin palette from Simply Posh Cosmetics. There is something about this that just has me excited and I hope that it restocks, I'll probably buy it. It's absolutely beautiful. There's this middle row of shimmers. Yes, the outsides are matte, but the colors on them I think are unique and distinct. I like that there's kind of this top more pastel or lighter um, shades and then the bottom are deeper. It's kind of monochromatic when we look down in columns on these. It just is beautiful. Like, I don't know what it is. It's just so stunningly beautiful. Like I wanted it so freaking bad. So I'm gonna keep my eye out on that. I don't know if it's gonna come back because it's called Cozy Cabin and like we're obviously gonna be moving out of this, I don't know. But but it's beautiful. The other palette though that I saw, cause then I went over to the Instagram and was like looking around. This is the Simply Posh Cosmetics uh, Northern Lights palette. And this was like back in stock. So I decided to pick it up. It didn't have any glitter in it. And it's all these like duochromatic shimmery shades all in one palette. That's all it is, our shimmers. And the swatches looked beautiful. The colors in here are really stunning. Like 
I, I could see myself using them as one shadow looks and all that. And I'm excited to try a new indie brand out. And I thought it was reasonably priced as well. This 12 pan palette was $30 or 29 something. So I thought that was pretty great. And I was excited to try something out. And I thought it would give me a good idea on whether or not I'd want to try the Cozy Cabin palette based off of formula if I tried this one first since it was available. So yeah, um, that was a spur of the moment decision. But yeah, I'm excited for that one to come in and see how it is. I mean, Indie just is exciting. As much as I can like definitely appreciate nice packaging, like, you know, like the Luxor packaging, I guess is what I mean to say, like from Charlotte Tilbury or Rowan or, you know, some of those brands I've been enjoying, Natasha Denona. You know, Indie does excite me. The Indie shadows, I still love sparkly shadows and all of that. And brands can really have some awesome stuff. So that was exciting. Another brand, I actually got sent this palette. So at some point you will see this hopefully on the channel, but this is the DD Signature, the Neutral Wonder palette. This is half mattes on the top, and then the bottom has these like textured neutral shades, um, like shimmery shades. So I was really excited that there were those textured neutrals, and I'm super excited to use it. I haven't used it yet, but I have it. And then I wanted to mention too, the reason that I was like excited to try that out is because specifically, oh, it looks like it's limited edition, dang it. The Pumpkin Spice palette. This is a little quad. So beautiful, you guys. Um, there's like this duochrome shadow in there. Um, then there's this deep like kind of green shade this orange shade as well as this beautiful golden color And when I saw that quad um, and then I saw this new palette I was like, okay, I'm excited to see what else this brand has and um, so yeah Anyway, wanted to mention that in here in case you're into the neutrals and I'll keep you updated with some my thoughts or we'll do a video I don't know something will happen. I'm sure next there are some new glosses from NYX cosmetics These are the this is juice glosses. I love the packaging. I think this this photo that they have on their Instagram is actually really fun and like giving me summer and it's been cold actually and it kind of sucks like I'm not used to that. You know, as much as I get excited for cold weather, actually being in even slightly cold weather. I mean, I live in California, so it's not like it's like that cold actually, but it's not that fun. <laughs> Anyway, I think that they look cute. I'm not interested in them, but they were cute little packaging. I liked it. <laughs> a few other things. Elf is coming out with the Power Grip Primer. This seems like it's basically trying to be similar to the Hydro Grip Primer from Milk. I'm assuming it's like finally, I mean, that primer has been out a long time, but it looks green. Like it's giving me very similar vibes. So I think that's what they're trying to do with it. I don't know if I really love a grippy primer. I love something moisturizing and hydrating, which this is meant to do, but I don't like like when my primers are sticky and tacky. So I, I don't know if I'll try that one. I also didn't really love the Hydro Grip from Milk. So since I feel like it's something in a similar vein, I'm not really interested in that one. Another thing from e.l.f. that I thought looked actually pretty, I don't know, high end almost. I mean, it's still an e.l.f. packaging, but there's something about it. These are the glossy lip stains and these looked really pretty. I thought the colors looked beautiful. These swatches on the arm look really beautiful. And I think this is like a pretty trendy type of product right now. Now, so that had me intrigued from the photo. If you've tried those, let me know if they're good. And last, and then I'll end it because I think this one's getting kind of long. This is from MAC Cosmetics and they did a collab with Keith Haring and it was just a small little lipstick collab, but I thought the packaging was cute. I liked that the lipsticks were kind of unconventional. There was a red one, but then there were also a blue and a yellow. And I felt like it just stayed true to the collab inspiration. Um, as much as I wouldn't wear most of that makeup, like I'm probably not gonna really wear a blue lip or a yellow lip. I still think it's like a fun collaboration to see. I mean, when you see the models wearing the yellow, it's a little bit questionable, I'm not gonna lie. Like do your thing if you like it, but you know. Um, but when we think of painting and they show them kind of mixed, I thought that was kind of fun. And yeah, definitely I feel like a collector's piece of makeup. It's definitely that kind of makeup item and um, I'm not necessarily gonna get that one, but I thought it looked really cool looking at it. Those are some of my thoughts, you guys, on the new makeup coming out. So happy that I've gotten over the desire to get the Pat McGrath stuff, like saving myself some money. I'm so happy about that. And that I genuinely feel that too. Like I genuinely am like, oh no, I'm good. Like I feel that in my soul, which feels so nice. A few things that I have my eye on, the Rare Beauty bronzers, maybe something from Colored Rain. Not sure if it's the right release quite yet, but you know, I liked seeing it. If anything, those indie shadows got me. They, those did get me. I really hope that the Cozy Cabin palette comes back. And if you have the Cozy Cabin palette, I know it was on pre-order, so I don't know if anyone even has it yet, if the pre-order just sold out. I don't know. I just, it looks so pretty. I really want that one. That's like the one that I'm like, 
I want it. But anyway, yeah, I'd let you know what you're interested in. Was there anything that you bought recently or anything that you've changed your mind on? Maybe something you thought you were gonna get and now you don't want it, or maybe something you didn't want initially, but now you're like, mm, actually I do. I'd love to know that because I definitely feel like I had some of those changes going on. But um, I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you so much for watching. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.